Bojo. Can I see the indigenous cause? The gig and do them. Some on gummy and doing jabba. I'd like to welcome everybody to this sacred site today. My spirit name is Spirit Bird. I'm related to the Thunderbird. My mother's clan is of common knowledge to be otter. My father says his clan is black duck. Others say it is cormorant. I live on the shore of Shimon Lake. We are continuing our celebration of Anishinaabek life as we gather outside this sweat lodge. Today, I will guide you through the teaching of how the Anishinaabek people received the original sweat lodge. Long ago, there was a period of great darkness. Families feuded within families. Neighbors disagreed with neighbors. Whole communities were in conflict. Entire nations fought with each other. Everywhere, men used their pipes and drums for war, for gaining more land. As I said, it was a very dark time. The men were so busy making war that none of them had time to hunt. Everyone grew weaker, and then they grew hungrier. They said they were so weak they would trip over a twig or even a blade of grass. Some fell and broke their bones. Others simply fell and died. That's how weak the people had become. A little boy, anxious to help his people, asked his parents what he could do. They told him he could go, go to the high place and seek a vision. Maybe through fasting he would receive a vision. and he would learn how to help his people. The boy's family helped him get ready. They helped prepare him. There are many things for them to do to get him ready. And when at last he is ready, all his grannies and grandpas, his aunties and his uncles, his mother and his father, his brothers and his sisters, they all gathered. They gathered at sunrise on that first day. And before he left, that little boy's mother and father gave him four kernels of corn. It was exactly at sunrise on the first day that he stood, started out walking towards the east. He walked all day, and he walked as far as he could. He walked until sunset. It was then he knew that he had reached his resting place, and he ate the first kernel of corn, and he rested. At 
sunrise on the second day, he started walking towards the south. That little boy walked all day. He walked all day towards the south until sunset. And when the sun was setting, he knew he had reached his second resting spot. He ate the second kernel of corn and he rested. On the third day, that little boy started walking at sunrise towards the west. He walked all day. All day he walked towards the west. And as the sun was setting, and that eagle flew through the western doorway, he knew he had come to his third resting place. And he ate that third kernel of corn and he rested. set out at sunrise on the fourth day, walking towards the north. He walked all day. All day he walked towards the north. And that sunset on that fourth day, he came to that high place, to that final resting place. And he ate that fourth kernel of corn and he rested. The boy had reached the high place, that place where he would seek his vision. And so he rested and began to fast. It was not known how long he went without food and water. But during this time, he began to dream. In one of his dreams, he traveled to the four levels of colors, to the dark side of the moon. When he arrived, he saw a lodge, and inside the lodge he could hear voices. The little boy was afraid and shy. But then, a friendly voice called from within. So, you are the vision seeker. Come inside. You are welcome. There is nothing to fear. boy stepped forward and entered the lodge. Inside there were seven grandfathers with long flowing white hair. Each and every one of those grandfathers wore his hair in a different manner. A wooden vessel was before the seven grandfathers. One by one, they dipped their fingers into it and rubbed water on the child. By doing this, each grandfather gave the vision seeker a gift. The eastern grandfather gave him knowledge. The southern grandfather gave him the gift of love. The Western grandfather gave that little boy the gift of honesty. The Northern grandfather gave that little boy the gift of strength. The 
sky grandfather gave the boy bravery. The grandfather at the center gave the gift of respect. And the earth grandfather gave him the gift of humility. Then the seven grandfathers instructed the boy to look into the water in the bottom of the vessel. All of creation was flashing into the boy's eyes. The sight was so overwhelming he had to look away. But he had seen enough to receive the sacred instructions. He understood that he must share his vision with his people if they were to survive. The grandfathers told him it was time to return to the high place. When the boy awoke, he was lying weak and hungry and thirsty on the ground of the high place. He reached out and picked a little piece of green cedar bough and ate it. With that cedar, he broke his fast. The boy lay still, trying to remember what he was supposed to do. When he was stronger, he sat up and felt the strength of the sunrise on his back. As he looked down from that high place towards his village, he saw a fire. In the fire, he saw the seven grandfathers. Then he remembered the vision he must take to his people. The boy's shadow cast by the rising sun fell across the mountain, across the fire, and through the opening on a doorway of a dwelling lodge. That lodge was built very much like this one. The cedar trail you see there symbolizes the boy's shadow. The cedar trail leading to the doorway of this sweat lodge symbolizes our connection to our past. The cedar road represents our people joining hands back in time to the origins of this teaching. And that mound you see, that crescent-shaped mound with the cedar placed along the top, represents that high place. That cedar represents the cedar that little boy broke his fast with. This is the place where visions live. And that place is the dark side of the moon. Bonjour, Nancy Indigenous. My name is Spirit Bird. And I'd like to talk about the tobacco. It said that a long time ago, we could communicate with the plants, with the spirits in the plants and the spirits in the rocks, the spirits in the water, the spirits in the wind. And we could understand each other, just like you understand me now. But through forgetting, or not wanting to follow the original instructions of the Creator, we forgot how. That is all forgot of tobacco. And that's why we use it in all our ceremonies. Tobacco has the power to take our prayers, to take our thanks, to take our thoughts, and send them out in the four sacred directions to the below and to the above. Oh. Miigwech, for this cedar, 
the cedar that we use in so many of our ceremonies. The cedar that we use in the sweat lodge, that we use outside of the sweat lodge. The cedar that we use in our sweat baths. It's been told to me by some of my teachers that this cedar has the power to take, an out, to take your prayers and to straighten out those words that you didn't quite say the way you had wanted to. That when you put this cedar in the fire, and as it crackles and snaps and hisses and goes up with your tobacco smoke, that it can straighten out even the place where your heart is at. I first met James in the summer of 1993 and that summer I attended four sweats and for me it was a, an opportunity to connect with feelings towards nature that I had had for a long time but sitting in that earth on that cedar with those hot rocks, those grandfathers warming and steaming up the inside of that lodge was a totally new and cleansing experience for me. And since that time, uh, over the last three years, I've attended many sweats. And each one gives me something of a strength, of an energy. And I always find that, in fact, for a couple weeks after a sweat, I have this efficiency of uh, concentration and creativity. It, it, it really does help help a person. The way I usually begin a, a series of paintings is to take location recordings that I've made on travels or other sounds and start to build and layer melodies and rhythms on top of that. I work with a whole bunch of different friends that are all musicians and we craft this sound, this uh, atmospheric soundtrack and I'll use that music to listen to while I'm developing the paintings or the idea the story. In Vision Seeker, I actually took that further in that I attended sweats for each individual painting so that many of those images were born from within that sweat lodge and hopefully contain the healing of those four sacred directions. along the wall where I uh, place my paintings. And as I'm developing a book or a story idea, I'll frequently just place the paintings in the order of the book so when, when I'm looking up at them, I can get the idea of what you'll see when you're flipping the pages. Now, for each of my projects, I like to travel to the country that it takes place. So for the orphan boy, I went to Africa and actually traveled all through East Africa where the Maasai live. And I got to know a little bit about the way they live and that was able to influence the paintings. I did the same thing for The Dragon's Pearl. In The Dragon's Pearl, the story takes place in China, and I traveled to China and encountered this incredible countryside and these beautiful people. And I got to return uh, to China and uh, visit that same area again, and it's in Guangxi province, near a town called Yangshu. And um, the friends and musicians and artists that I've met there really had a, a strong influence on me and they, they certainly had a big influence on the way the book looks because it's the people that you meet and the 
food that you eat and the things that you see, all of those things come together and influence the way you're going to look at things. And being an artist, I'm able to put all those influences in, into each project. I hope. I try. Some of the paintings you see behind me are for a new book I'm working on, and it's an Australian story. And uh, that'll be a project that you'll see down the road coming out. It usually takes me about a year to develop a book. And in Vision Seeker, this has been a really exciting thing because I've been able to prepare this video, which is showing another dimension to the research that I did uh, in order to do the story. And I'm able to show you these video images. And again, because I'm good friends with James, we work together on preparing this video. And I hope that it contains some of the beautiful feelings that I've had within his sweat lodge and also the respect that I'm learning for all things in life and all living things. And I think this is a real important message in this day and age, the whole idea that this sweat lodge has been performed for a long time for many cultures all across North America, Central and South America. And it's very important that the people whose tradition this is maintain their ceremonies and maintain their stories and share their stories because we can all learn from these stories and they're very important teachings.